Hello, I'm Mario Tonaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, taking care of business today with uh, Alberta Premier Daniel Smith. Thanks, Daniel, for joining us today. My pleasure. All right, let's talk economic, economic stuff. And uh, right now, how would you describe how Alberta's economy is doing? I feel really good about where we're at. We uh, have have put out our Alberta is calling message to the to the entire country and indeed the entire world. And people have been responding to it. We keep having people move here, which I think is one of the original signs or one of the initial signs that things are going well. But we, we're also seeing a, a major amount of investment. It's um, we, we proved out the case that you can lower tax rates and increase revenue. We we, we reduced our, our corporate tax rate to, down to 8%, which makes us most competitive in the country. But also when you look at North America, the combined state and federal tax in the U.S., we're, we're better than 44, 44 of them. So we're, we're doing really well. And you can see it because we, we ended up with a record number of corporate tax uh, revenue last year, which was $8.2 billion. We're seeing an increase in investment investment in our venture capital sector. We keep on setting new records each and every year. And we're beginning as well to see some major uh, projects that are looking at Alberta because of our Alberta Petrochemical Incentive Program. Dow Chemical is very close to making a final investment decision on a major net zero project. Air Products is in process of a net zero hydrogen plant. The Pathways Group has uh, really taken the lead, I think, on developing some innovative innovative approaches to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. That's all attracting uh, additional support. And then, of course, we have uh, we, we have the home building sector, which is really just is just setting to boom, I think. We have a few th things that we need to do to make sure that we're supporting our municipal counterparts so that we can continue to welcome with open arms everyone who wants to, to move here. But I'm feeling pretty good, especially after that Supreme Court decision yesterday. I'm feeling doubly good. Okay, I'm going to ask you that and uh, uh, ask you a little bit about that uh... Explain that to the average Joe out there, uh, uh, average Canadian, average Albertan, what this means, that a decision that was made by the Supreme Court of Canada. Yeah, well, six years ago, the federal government passed their Impact Assessment Act, and it was very controversial at the time. I remember there was an advocacy group called Suits and Boots that really put forward a full court press to try to defeat it in the Senate at the 11th hour, as well as uh, another bill, Bill C-48, which would have which banned tanker traffic off the off the West Coast. But but people will recall C-69 has often been referred to as the no more pipelines bill. And it's because it put in place a very convoluted process and lengthy process that added regulatory uncertainty to getting any major projects approved, not just ones that would fall into federal jurisdiction, but but projects that have historically fallen into provincial jurisdiction as well. And that was our big our, our big complaint is that we became a subject to federal rules on any major industrial project that they deemed they wanted to have authority over. Anything from a 200 megawatt or more power plant to a 75 kilometer stretch of new road to, of course, any of the major industrial uh, uh, operations. And, and we just felt that that, that was an overreach. And, and, the federal, and the Supreme Court agreed. After six years of fighting, mm. they told the federal government they were out of their lane, they were acting illegally, and they, got to, they have to stop doing it. And so we are going to make sure that we continue to defend our constitutional rights, to develop our resources, develop our electricity. And that is, uh, so it was really encouraging to, to see that the Constitution matters, that the court has uh, rendered this decision and Ottawa has just got to step back. But, but the thing that I'm worried about is the amount of uncertainty and the losses that we've seen in the, in the last six years as a result. So that's why I've declared Alberta is open for business. Anything we have authority to approve, we are more than happy to reconsider some of those projects. Let's talk about the oil and gas sector, uh, you know, obviously has come under uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of scrutiny, et cetera, uh, in recent years. Um, what's the importance of this sector to the overall economy, both in Alberta, but then on the broader scale to the Canadian economy? It's, it's massive. I always found it surprising that Unifor would get away with calling the auto industry the largest sector. It's not. Uh, our largest sector is the oil and gas industry by by export. I believe it's somewhere in the order of 125 billion dollars in export and uh, and uh, and GDP, um, and it's only going to continue to grow. We've got Coastal Gas Link, which is going to be completed within I think the next year, and that will also open up more natural gas export, LNG export, to reduce emissions around the world. We've got Trans Mountain Pipeline that I just read today is 90% complete, so we're nearing the finish line on that as well. So that is also going to increase the sector, and people should be excited. 
about that because when Alberta does well, everybody does well. There's always manufacturing components that are required to be able to continue doing this kind of construction. When we generate revenue, the federal government takes more uh, income tax revenue than we do on personal income tax and corporate income tax as well. So that goes to benefit the rest of the country. And so uh, I think people should be cheering us on, especially now that our industry has been so responsible in charting a pathway to net zero by 2050, as well as uh, in engaging in true economic reconciliation with First Nations partners. I just read about another um, pipeline project that we have uh, assisted in helping to underwrite and, and give a loan guarantee for so that First Nations groups can, can buy into existing um, hydrocarbon pipeline projects so that they can develop a long-term source of revenue. So I think that that we are we are seeing an industry that is not only valuable, but it's also valued because of uh, the, 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 the need for consumers to be able to have affordable and reliable energy, as well as the, the partnerships that, we are, that we're making with First Nations. I'm, I'm very proud of this industry. Now, Danielle, you mentioned uh, briefly earlier uh, the push to attract uh, people to this province. Uh, and I, I think that's, while well, it's over a year uh, that this has been going on, the campaign Tell us a little bit about the campaign, why it's important, and you know what you've found so far in terms of success from this campaign. Well, for so many years, you'll recall, Alberta was underperforming. We 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 really were in a doldrums from about the the latter part of 2014, all the way through until about uh, until the end of the pandemic. And we, we've come back in full force saying it's is now time for us to, to begin reinvesting in our province. It's time to be reinvesting in our traditional base and also developing new industry, diversifying our economy ac across a whole range of fronts. And we need people to do that. So that was, I think, what, what the reason for the Alberta's Calling campaign is to let people know that this is the place to be, especially when you start looking at the rising interest rates and the, and the cost implications it's having for young people wanting to attain their first home. It's become practically impossible in places like Vancouver and, and Toronto. And yet it's still possible here. So we wanted to make sure people understood that. We've got a relatively low inflation rate, I think the lowest in the country because of some of the decisions that we've made to defray the cost of, um, of fuel with the reprieve on the, on the fuel tax. We've also got the lowest uh, cost of taxes in the, in the country as well, and um, a, a relatively affordable cost of living even in our major cities. So that, that was part of it, is we want young people who were thinking about what uh, they want to do for their careers to, to, plant, to plant a seed here and to, to make their careers here. And it's it's working. I believe that we had almost 200,000 people come into our province our, our province last year. And so we we're on a, on a track to attract people here in the levels that we haven't seen since I think 1981 was the was what I had read. So that's yeah. that's really positive. I and mean, we want to keep people coming. We, we think that Alberta is such an open place, such a welcoming place. It's a place you can succeed on your ideas, on merit, on hard work. And uh, we, we want uh, people co to come here, not just from across Canada, but from around the world. Um, I was curious, uh, the campaign itself, formal part of the campaign, how long is that going to continue? We have, I think, intended to do three phases. So the first phase yeah. was ext extremely successful and we rolled it out mostly in the Ontario uh, and, and British Columbia uh, areas. But uh, the second phase of the campaign, we really tried to target to those places where they have high unemployment rates. Because if you don't have good job prospects at home, we wanted people to know that there's an opportunity to have a good job, job prospect here. The, the third one, we're, we're, we're wanting to make sure that we're able to keep our housing keeping up pace with the number of people coming here. And so the, the third phase will have to be in sync with some of the decisions that we make to allow for, for increasing housing, because um, we were at a point where we had a lot of housing. Um, and so we, we didn't have the immediate pressures because we'd had that stall that happened in 2014. But we have to make sure that when people come here, they are still able to buy a single family home or get a good, uh, inappropriate rental property. And so there's still a little bit more policy work that we need to do to make sure that that stays in sync. But it, they're, they're complementary because... Uh, we need to attract people here from the construction industry. And so in some ways, being able to attract people from all of those wonderful building trades is going to be essential to be able to keep up with growth. So that's that's just what we're trying to get into sync right now with our, with our municipalities. Now, speaking of attracting, uh, so when you're looking at attracting investment, attracting new businesses uh, to the province, 
What's your sales pitch to, to companies? I, you know, I just made that sales pitch this morning. I was speaking at the, the, the Schachter uh, annual event where they bring in, I think, 700 different in investors to hear about the different opportunities that we have in Alberta. And I, I think it begins with saying we're open for business. We, we, we want to make sure that we're attracting business, that we're clearing away barriers. And so part of the reason why I moved Invest Alberta into my portfolio is because I feel I, ha I play a role in making sure that if there are multiple departments that need to be coordinated to get to a final investment decision, that I'm aware of it and I can do what needs to be done to get the barriers out of the way. The other part is that I have um, some fantastic ministers who are leading on their files. All of them have an, an outlook of how can we attract new investment here. And part of the pitch is lowest corporate income tax in Canada and almost uh, the lowest in North America. We have no capital tax. We have uh, no payroll tax. We uh, also have the ability for workers to have to be able to keep more of what they earn with a low personal rate of income tax, as well as uh, no health care premiums. And that's important for our international audience. The, um, the in addition to to that, we have a, a well trained workforce. When you look at the number of people coming out of our engineering schools, engineering in particular is mm -hmm. uh, one that can be repurposed to a whole variety of industries. Uh, we also have uh, the the the, uh, the the creative support of a of a growing new technology industry, and they're working hand in glove with our existing uh, traditional industries to be able to make sure that we're accelerating the, the kind of investment that we want to see in the tech sector. Uh, in addition, the beautiful mountain parks that we have, whether it's Jasper or whether it's uh, Mount Canmore area or whether it's even down south in the Crow's Nest Pass, you can come here, have a beautiful quality of, of living, have a low cost of living, be able to buy a house, and then be able to do fun things with the family on the weekend all over this province. So <laughs> those are those are pretty attractive things. I, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling like it's a pretty good pitch. <laughs> Great. Um, one last thing I wanted to talk to you about in, in terms of a topic is uh, small business and entrepreneurs. Now, we all know how challenging it has been since the pandemic for, for this sector of the economy. Um, what do you think needs to be done to help support uh, the small business community uh, in the country? Well, one thing I think the federal government could do is to give another one-year reprieve on that Canadian uh, business account loan. Uh, it's coming due at $60,000 by the end of this year, and we're at a time of high interest rates. So the federal government, I would say, could do a lot to make sure that they don't end up toppling any of those small businesses by extending that for a year. We have asked on behalf of uh, our finance minister has asked Christian Freeland to consider that. And I, we, it, was, it was brought up in a, a recent call with our Council of the Federation. The other premiers are gravely worried that uh, that, that is going to, to result in, in some, some hardship for our small businesses if they don't end up extending that. The, the other thing, though, is we, we also know that we have to reduce red tape. Now, one of the things that makes it really difficult for a business is how the length of time it takes to get things approved. So I've been very encouraged to hear our municipalities talk about having streamlined fast track decision-making processes. And we've got to align that at the provincial level as well. If you're going to say yes, say yes quickly. If you're going to say no, say no quickly. If it's yeah. going to be with conditions, tell people what the conditions are so they can get into compliance quickly. There's no reason why these processes should drag on for months or, heaven forbid, even years in some yeah. cases. So those are the things that we're working on so that we can bring that into alignment as well. And also just making sure that we've got a number of different incubators so that we can help support some of the some of the great ideas that are out there. Innovate Alberta, I have heard great things about it from those who've been able to access um, programming there. Uh, our Alberta Enterprise Corporation as well, which also helps to, to support the entrepreneurial sector. We have got our Emissions Reduction Alberta, which uh, helps to, to fund a, a number of different green technologies that will reduce emissions. And we're, we're prepared to do more of that. We also want to make sure that we've got uh, tax credits that make us attractive. So the Alberta Petrochemical Incentive Program has been largely taken advantage of by the big guys, but we also have the uh, agri-food tax credit that uh, that we've put out there as well. In addition, we're looking for ways that we can support helium and ammonia and critical uh, minerals and, and carbon capture utilization and storage. And if we can attract those 
big guys here, that also creates a vibrant, robust environment for smaller guys to do well as well. So everybody benefits when we have a, a positive investment ecosystem. And that's what we're working really hard on creating. The red tape reduction in particular, yeah. We've uh, reduced 33% of our regulations. So we've met our target and we calculate that that has probably saved the business community $2.6 billion. We're always looking for ways to be able to do more of that. And my, my minister, Dale Nally, Service Alberta, Red Tape Reduction, I've just given him authority over AGLC because that may be an area as well that we can help our small distilleries and our small microbreweries continue to, to be able to build out that, that industry also. So we're, we're always looking for, our, for ways to make life easier. We want this to be the best place in the in, entire country to do business. All right. Wonderful. Thanks, uh, Daniel, for joining us today. My pleasure. All right, that was uh, Alberta Premier Daniel Smith. I'm Mario Tonaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, Taking Care of Business. Thanks for joining us today.